This demo movie is going to show you some of the features in our Engine Analyzer Plus. There's lots of features that you can add to our standard Engine Analyzer, about 10 of them, and we'll go through several of them in this demo. If you have a standard Engine Analyzer, you can unlock the Plus features by clicking on File, Unlock Plus Version. If you hadn't already unlocked it, like is the case in this one, it would ask you to enter an unlock number that you could get from Performance Trends for an update charge of $99. Some of the unlock or some of the uh, plus features, if we click on Running Conditions, are shown here. Um, in the standard version, all you can do is 10 RPMs. You can't do more than that. In the plus version, you can go up to 20 RPMs which you can see here extends this RPM very high, much higher than we need, but we, if we lower this increment to like 250 and lower the starting RPM, we can get a 20 RPMs and, uh, and still some good detail because we're doing every 250 RPM. Another feature that's added in the plus is you can do um, calculations for lots of alternate fuels here. Diesel, propane, either a high pressure liquid injection or low pressure gas injection, and um, some other things, natural gas. But we're going to keep it at gasoline for now. Back out of here. You're going to Cam and Valve Train. A couple of the features shown here is you can do. Uh, It'll show you duration of 200 thousandths. A lot of cam manufacturers are giving out this data now. And if you know what the duration is at 200, or at 50 thousandths, in this case, let's say it's 200 degrees duration, and you know what it's supposed to be at 200, you can come up here and adjust some of the, uh, adjust some of the cam specs here, and you'll see uh, this 200 thousandths duration change. Right now, we're actually specifying a cheater, an aggressive hydraulic roller cheater. If we go to a mild cheater profile, cheater profile means that over the nose, there's some duration of dwell of no change in lift. And usually, cheater means it's used for some uh, sanctioning bodies for racing where they say you're limited to lift. And when you're limited to lift, what they do is they jump up to that lift as soon as they can, stay there, and then drop down as soon as they can. Very aggressive ramp rates, but just limiting the lift. That's why we call them cheaters. And you can see here the duration at 200,000 has changed. So um, you can't type in the duration at 200,000 directly, but by adjusting the profile type up here, you can see which profile type best. Let's see here. We'll just put in a, an aggressive hydraulic roller without the cheater, and you can see the duration has dropped down even more. Another thing here um, that you'll get with a plus is piston to valve clearance. You got a screen here where you can estimate the piston to valve clearance and how it's going to change by changing things like um, valve angle or cam specs and such. For example, right now um, it's showing that we're not um, going down into the piston at all. This is all based on a flat top piston. If you got pop ups or dishes in the piston, we can't uh, do anything with that. I mean, you just have to visualize yourself that if you have a flat top, this is how much safety margin you have. For example, um, you put in the valve angles here, gasket thickness, deck height clearance. If the piston is popping up above the deck, this would be a negative number if it's going 20 thousandths. If it's going 20 thousandths above the deck, that would be a minus 20 thousandths deck height clearance. And then these uh, numbers here are pretty interesting. This is uh, the distance between the, the closest edge of the valve down to the deck surface of the head. So 0.345 means it's 345 thousandths clearance between, if you put a straight edge across the head, the deck surface of the head, to the closest part of the intake valve, the edge of the intake valve closest to that, you'd have 345 thousandths. Now if that was different, let's say only 50 thousandths, you could see this is saying that the intake valve for the current cam and everything would be going 82 thousandths into the flat top of the piston. Or uh, you better have valve reliefs that are significantly more than 82 thousandths to uh, provide valve piston to valve clearance that you need. We'll get out of here. Just showing you that. Um, 
Another thing you get in the plus is you can, I'm going to do something real quick. I'm going to calculate performance for this. And here you can see we're uh, going in 250 RPM increments. And there's a lot more data here and a lot more detail because we're going every 250 thousands, 250 RPM, I'm sorry. Now, if we go over here and click on preferences, another option you have in the uh, plus version is you can do all your measurements in millimeters. So for imports or if you're outside of the U.S., you might want to do everything in millimeters. You know, so they you sure you want to do this? Because it's a pretty significant change. Yep, for sure. And what it's done, it's taken all the inches measurements in this file and converted them to millimeters. And just to show you how well this is done, I'm going to calculate performance. Now that things are in millimeters, and I'm going to show you here, see all the short block specs are now in millimeters, stroke, bore. Go to the heads. Valve diameter, port diameter, and such, all done in millimeters. I'm going to calculate performance again. And I'm going to do a comparison graph of this in inches and millimeters. And you can see here they are the same, which means that all those measurements, even though we might be a little round off and such, you're getting exactly the same numbers. So it's a pretty good conversion. We're being very careful to make sure everything works out correctly for you when you make this change. But since most of us are used to inches, I'm going to switch this back. I just wanted to show you that real quick. Inches. Okay. Are you sure you want to do that? Yep. And now all the conversions have been made. So what we're going to do now is, uh, let's just, for instance, let's just make some kind of change. Um, typical race single plane. Let's just make a change. Just to do something. We're going to put a tunnel ram on this thing. And you can see here what the, how the program would estimate what a tunnel ram's dimensions would be. This is based largely on the current bore and stroke of the engine and the port volumes and the heads. That's how it comes up with these numbers for um, using these typical specs. If you want to uh, put in your own specs, you can use specs below. Or you can just pick out a typical street single plane you can see these numbers are now smaller since they're a street single plane compared to a tunnel ramp so okay let's just go to the street single plane let's calculate performance and just see what that did and as we expected we went from a race single plane to a street single plane and now performance has dropped we lost uh, from 6, 563 to 551 we lost 12 foot pounds we lost some horsepower up here too at the horsepower peak. But I'm going to show you a couple other features here that are in the plus that are pretty nice. One of them is graphs. I'm going to select special graph types, which is not available in the standard. And let's uh, add some new things here. We're going to do four types of data. And what do we want to include in the graph? This is not available with. Uh, unless you get the plus version. Let's say spark advance. We want to graph out the spark advance curve. And let's also include volumetric efficiency. OK. These multiplies or scale factors are help scale up. For example, spark advance is a very small number, maybe up to 20 or 30 degrees. You have a line of 20 or 30 with data up here at 500 and 600. You're not going to see it. So in order to see it, Oh, I'm sorry, we already had spark advance here. Let's do something different then. Well, hey, let's make this horsepower. Horsepower, and that we don't have to change. But spark advance, we're going to have to change. We're going to have to bump that up by a factor of 10 so we can see it. And volumetric efficiency also. We might want to back, I'm sorry, bump that up by a factor of 10 also. And let's make this graph. And here, I think this is volumetric efficiency up here. Maybe you don't like the way this graph shows up, where volumetric efficiency is the high thing. And here's your torque and horsepower. And here's the spark advance. You can see the spark advance did not change much by uh, changing the intake manifold type, which is pretty understandable. It shouldn't change things much. If we change the compression ratio or head specs, spark advance would change a lot. Maybe you don't like the way that graph looks. Let's go here. And let's let volumetric efficiency be a smaller number. 
because most people want the torque and horsepower to really stand out. Now volumetric efficiency is down here, and the torque and horsepower are the highest numbers shown at the most detail. Here's your spark advance, and here's volumetric efficiency down here. And still we can zoom in on anything we want or go back to full view. One of the nicest features, though, in the app in the Plus version is this optimized feature here. If I click on optimize, it's the second optimized feature. It's different than the one you see on the main screen. And what it lets you do is lets you play with specs right on the graph screen. For example, cam valve train. Let's say we want to work with the cam valve train for a while. And we want to work with, let's say, intake duration. And we want to see what happens if we change intake duration. <clears throat> and you can see here what's happening here. The baseline is shown here, and the current combo is the red and the light blue. And you can see how much it's going up here as we just click on this. We're getting huge improvements here. Now, you can type a number in here, too. You don't have to just click on those buttons. You can type in here. But as we're gaining horsepower up here, we're losing torque down here. But that's usually the trade-off you have to decide. Another thing you might want to see is, is the baseline started with 20 inches of vacuum, and now we're down to 14.4. But we're gaining horsepower. Let's say that's the direction we want to go. So let's say we're going to go over here and on the heads. We're going to start bumping up the flow efficiency. These are heads that flow better. If I click on this button here, we jump things up by a lot at a time. But we're still losing down here on the low end. So what can we try? Let's go to the intake. Let's try uh, intake runner length. And right now it's set to 5. Let's start increasing that. Wow, look at that. We're starting to get back more of this low end torque we lost. We are losing some horsepower. But we're certainly tilting that curve how we would want to do it. <clears throat> What happens if we change intake runner diameter? Let's start bumping that up. There's a little warning blurb there. But you can see what we're doing. We're doing some uh, good things here. But anyway, this is a very fast way of doing things uh, right here on this screen. And this is probably the nicest feature in the Plus version. This concludes our demo.